Thumbs up to Google for allowing us to download Android N, the developer preview version of Android N over the air. So I was able to update Android N without having to download any files to my PC and having to connect my 6P to my laptop or anything like that. I was just able to download over the air and it worked pretty seamlessly. I didn't have to wipe any of my data. It just updated the OS and then I was good to go. The thing you have to remember though that this is still the beta version of Android N. This isn't a final product. So there are gonna be bugs. I've already run into a couple. I'm gonna see if I can reproduce those issues but for the most part it seems to be running pretty smoothly pretty solidly and that's pretty impressive for their first run of android n now i have my third gen moto g here running android 6.0 marshmallow and i just put this here so i can do a comparison of marshmallow and android n for you guys so you can really see the differences between the two the first thing i want to point out is the os's still look pretty much the same the differences kind of lie in the settings and with the multitasking and just little differences here and there. They might not be the biggest changes, but they seem pretty refined and I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. So in Marshmallow, when you typically go to your settings, you're going to have to swipe down once and then swipe down again to get to these settings. Or what you can do is you can use the two fingers to get the settings right away. But when you swipe down once, you have quick toggles here for your Wi-Fi, for cellular data, your battery, uh, this is for do not disturb, uh, flashlight, and then if you swipe down again, you'll get everything else. What's cool about these though, is that you can change and rearrange the icons that are up here. So if you don't want these five, you can make them something else. You would just hit edit, move the icons around, and then you'll get the first five of something else. So say for example, you want to dig into the flashlight. You swipe down once, hit the flashlight, you're good to go. And then if you wanted to dig into apps, like let's say you wanted to dig into the battery, after you swipe down once, you can just hold down and it brings you right into the battery. And you can tell the battery screen looks a little different here on Marshmallow compared to Android N. One of the big features for me is being able to reply to a text message without having to go into Hangouts. So if I were to text myself, I was just testing this earlier, Right away, you get a reply over here. It shows you the time, and these cards are actually a little more detailed than they normally are. So I can just hit reply, send my message, and then send it off and I'm good to go. Okay, let's go into the settings real quick on both of these phones. So as far as settings go, the settings now on Android N have a lot more detail, or at least more detail on it than it normally did on Marshmallow. You can see the differences here for Wi-Fi. It shows the name of the network. Bluetooth is disabled. Data usage, letting you know how much you've used. Even with the display, adaptive brightness is on, what the ringer volume's at, so on and so forth. So it's a lot more informative than it used to be. All right, let's get into our recent apps, multitasking. So when you click here on Marshmallow, you get your cards, you know, you can click from one to the next. The cards look a little smaller than the ones on Android N. These seem to actually just fill up the screen. Now maybe that's also because I'm using a 6P and the screen's a lot bigger, but I believe the cards are a lot bigger than they normally were on Marshmallow when I had my 6P. So you can go from app to app, same difference. But let's say you wanna use Chrome and you wanna use another app. So what you would do is in Chrome, you can hold this button down and you'll see at the bottom here, it changes to like a split screen. So the square that used to just be a square is now like two separate squares or two rectangles. And so you have the app that you wanna keep up on the top while you can still go through your other apps at the bottom. And then there's a bar here in the middle where you can actually kind of size up what you want. So you can have it smaller or bigger. And then if you wanna close one app, you can just bring it all the way down or bring it all the way up. And if you go back to the home screen, you can still see that it's still split into two. It keeps the top app that you were using kept up top. And then if you go to another app, it now takes over at the bottom. And again, if you wanna keep this app instead of the one on top, you just bring it back up. You can see the split screen is gone. If you want it back, you just double click 
and then you can go through your other apps again. And sometimes there are other apps that you still can't use and it will let you know that it's not made for split screen. I was gonna show too that you can use it in split screen so it works the same way and then you can slide it over. And one little thing too that I wanted to point out, to use that system tuner, you have to hold that settings button down and then you release. And the system UI tuner, you can use it to change the notification bar at the top. You can use it to put a battery percentage up here instead. But I did notice when you use System Tuner here, MUI Tuner here, there are a little more options than on Marshmallow. So you have something like color and appearance where you can actually calibrate the display. And see, this is like, this is a bug right here because normally the screen is not that small. And I don't know if it's because of portrait mode or how it was set. Uh, some other bugs I've noticed actually is like when I open Instagram, actually, let me close that and reopen Instagram, is I get an error message right here. Sometimes I've noticed when I hit the app drawer, the app drawer isn't a full screen here, it's just half of the screen. So like I said, it's still buggy. If you are going to use it, you know, kind of be aware that you're going to probably run into bugs and I'm sure in time they'll get to that and they'll fix it but I haven't noticed any big bugs that make it hard for me to use the phone. Anyway let's go back to the system UI tuner and see if we can fix that issue. And um, Let me actually try to restart it. Alright. So you can see here how it was a bug because it just, I couldn't get the actual display to spread out. But so you can calibrate the display, Android beta program. Um, but I wanted to talk about something in the status bar that for me, I find useful. And it's actually in the time and you can't do this on Marshmallow, but you can show hours, minutes, and seconds. And I know that's not a big deal for probably most people, but I like to actually see the seconds. Usually if I need to time something for, you know, 30 seconds or 45 seconds or even a minute, I can just have this without pulling the clock. Again, not the biggest deal, but it's helpful for me. I thought maybe for the battery to show the percentage, I thought they were going to change the way this looks or at least put the percentage somewhere else because I don't like the way it actually shows in the battery. I think it doesn't show as easily as just putting a number right next to the battery, but maybe they'll change that later on. Again, you could see on Android Marshmallow and Android N that Android N has a little more information even before getting into that particular setting. So you could see the name of the Wi-Fi network, how much data you use, so on and so forth. But let's say you wanted to change a setting in the display. Again, you can see here adaptive brightness is on, so you wouldn't even have to go into it if that's all you were trying to make sure was checked. But let's say you're in the display and you change whatever settings you want. For Android Marshmallow, if you wanted to go through another part of the settings, you're gonna have to hit back and then you go through whatever you're looking for and then click into it. What's nice here is this has a hamburger menu now where you can just kind of look through the settings on what you want to go to. And if you want to change something in the sound, you just click sound. After you change that, you can go back here. It's just an easier way to navigate. And I like that they did that. Anyway, so far so good. Everything right now for Android N seems to be real clean. Uh, seems really efficient and hopefully in the future they're going to be adding more things in. Hopefully they'll clean some of the bugs out. Now if you have a Nexus uh, 5X or 6P and I'm pretty sure if you have like a Nexus 6, I don't know how far you can go back. I don't know if this is something that the Nexus 5 offers, but I'm sure for the 6, 5X, 6P, this is something that you can get over the air. You can start messing around with it. You don't have to wipe your data. So you still have all of your previous apps and you're not going to have to wipe it out clean and start fresh. So if it's something you want to try, give it a shot. Again, just remember it's probably going to be buggy. Not everything is going to work perfectly. So kind of do it at your own risk. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow.